today on Be Something Wonderful. Create your ideal relationship, manifesting that specific person. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back to the studios of Be Something Wonderful. Just a few minutes ago, we wrapped up our third live event of 2024 on the Be Something Wonderful membership channel. That, uh, vi that video or that live event is now available to watch on the membership channel if you're a member and you missed it. If you're not a member and you're interested, there's a link below. Creators, big video today. I wanna talk about this client that I've met with now over the last few months a few times. And, and it's interesting. It was related to a specific person. And this is a person that said, Tom, this is, you know, I've met with a lot of coaches. I've, I've been doing this for a while, but I'm beginning to think this is all BS, right? So it was, it, this is one of those <laughs> views of reality creation. So I'm going to talk about what happened, what we talked about, and really the powerful um, uh, shift he made in his reality. So I've tried everything to manifest her back. This is what he started out with when we had first talked. You name it. Is this stuff all just BS or not? Countless coaches. I'm fed up. Now hear this. Clearly, he's creating this reality of being fed up, that it's all BS. These are assumptions within him. But really, the thing I wanted to focus on, he, his focus is on manifesting her back, the specific person. Not on shifting to a new identity, and creating a, a new world and a new version of her, but focused on the old reality and getting her back in that reality. Do you see it? Thought, he says, he says here, I thought I was close. Show, it was showing signs. So I told her I wanted it to be more. And then she cut him off completely. Completely, not even friends. He was devastated. He was imagining it. That's why he goes, this stuff's all BS, right? It, it, he was imagining it. He was feeling like there were signs. And then he, he, he said, you know, he wanted it to be more and that she cut him off completely. Again, you, this idea that, that he was imagining it, but from what perspective? From a reality of trying to manifest that version of her that doesn't want to be with him back. From that old identity of him right? Experiencing lack. He was in the middle, right? Which I've talked about, the messy middle. Tried to influence a version of her created and being created by him in every moment of an, of an identity of him trying to manifest her back. Do you see it? He hadn't changed. So reality can change. He didn't move to a new version of himself. It, remember, it's not about her. It's not about the middle, trying to make something happen in the middle. It's not about others, it's about you, the new you. Do you see it? It's, it, it? When you have a desire, to have a desire, to desire a state, is to be it, is to have it. Right? He got caught in the middle. He didn't go to the end and move to that new identity. He got caught in the end trying to manifest her back, trying to make something happen. Let's hit this a little bit more. Remember, it's about you. As reality, it's about you in that knowing. It doesn't mean you don't imagine your specific person. I'm not saying that when I say it's about you. I'm not saying not to include an image of you and that person together. That's not at all what we're saying. Be the best version of you or preferred version of you. That's what we're saying. It's not them. It's not the others. It's not the world. Because that, but, it, but be the best version of you because that's who you prefer to be. Do you see it? Be in love with reality. Be in love with that version of you. Be the best version of you. Even if you have them in your imaginal scene, of course that's powerful. And of course that's okay. But we're saying that make it about you. So as we were talking about this, he said, oh, in, in, our, in, in one of our sessions, oh, sugar. <laughs> For the little kitties out there that I know that are watching the channel, the, I, I, was, I was imagining me, hear the big insight here as we, as we really unpack this. I was imagining me living my best life with them, with her. All smiles. In other words, there's nothing inherently wrong with that scene. 
right? I, he, but he was imagining him living the, his best life. In other words, his best life is only conditioned on him being with her. Hear the distinction here, right? He was still imagining it from that uh, reality that if I have her, if I get her back, then I'm going to be living my best life. Still from the old version, it was the old you, now fulfilled because they're back. You're making it conditional. See, he's imagining himself fulfilled, but only because she's back with him. I'm living my best life because she's in my life. Otherwise, I'm not living my best life. Do you hear the distinction? This is big here. This was, it. This was part of what he realized as we were talking, right? Forget the middle. Be that new identity. And, and imagine them, hear this, living their best life with you. Do you see? You're making it about you. You're the center. It's their best life because you're, because you're the best version of you. They'll be leaving their best life. So imagine them with you, but making it about you, right? Making it about you because of who you are. They're, they want to be with you. They want to they they, they be with you to live their best life. Do you see it? It's about who and the who is you. So I gave him a 48-hour challenge when we had first talked. To, to move off this idea of making it about them, right? Or, or him imagining that I'm only complete, I'm only living my best life if she's in it. Instead, make it about you being that best version of you and imagine them smiling and living their best life because of you, because it's all about you. Then, then I said, well, let's talk at the end of, you know, two days later, right? Let's have a brief conversation, right? And, and it wasn't about, and it, nothing, he, he said, well, nothing's happened out there, but I know it's happened, right? He got this idea that it's not about what's happened out there. So that's why I wanted to talk to him. I go, it doesn't matter. You've created it. It doesn't matter. It's done, right? Stay in this new identity. You're there, right? The whole idea of the 48-hour challenge is just to move him there to that desired reality, that desired version of him, be that, person with, be that person with whom everybody's living their best life when they're with you. See the world as everybody thriving because of you, because you're the center, right? Then just under three weeks later, they, she called him. I'm, I'm, to him, it was unbelievable because she, she didn't even want to be friends with them. And now they're back together. This is powerful. I got tingles as we were talking about this. I want, to, I want to unpack this a little bit more. Some of the things that we talked about during our sessions. And definitely, as we wrapped up this, this last session, what, what, how he has really moved, right? And what if all those thought and feelings the people, events, and circumstances were not the source or cause of anything. Think about this. What if all that you want and desire, and I mean everything, were already fulfilled in the, in the having of them, right? What if you just knew, had the knowing, that you know, <laughs> that you know, and that knowing itself is the only source and cause of reality of everything you could ever be and desire? Well, then you wouldn't be trying to make anything happen. Do you see this? Let's, let's cover this more. That's what the ancients told us. And, and, and here, be still and know that I am God. In other words, cease striving. Cease trying. Cease trying to resolve things or react to things. Cease trying to make something happen out there. Cease trying to change yourself to get somebody or have something. Just be the best version of you. Be still and know that you're already that best version of you. You're already perfect in every way. That I am that I am. That you're the one and only source or cause or creator. That, that nothing can happen out there to you. That you create it all. It's about who and the who is you. Stop asking how to know. Go to the knowing that you are. You're already, what is God or that, that awareness or that reality? It's that self-knowing intelligence. It's you, it's knowing itself. You are the self-aware intelligence 
that we call God. You are that very same knowing and source. Stop asking about that. The middle is to know what you know experientially in the physical world of form. That's what the middle is for. It's not to put a separation between what you want and its fulfillment. It's to know that you're already there, that the middle is just the experience of that reality already within you. To know yourself, to know that knowing, to know that you know experientially. That knowing, that awareness, that consciousness is the source of all experiences, not, not the other way around. Do you see it? Even he had that thought, right? That, that, that the experiences are causing him to doubt or the experiences are creating something. They don't create anything. You're the source of all experiences because experiencing itself is reality. It's not the other way around. That knowing is the source of everything you experience and that knowing is experience itself. That's powerful. So, I am that which I desire. That's the ancient secret of the excluded middle. That I'm already that. To desire a state is to have it. In other words, the thoughts and feelings and the doubts, that keeps you, that keep, they create this idea that you have to manifest it or that you're separate from it. The, the middle is how you experience it. The middle is that change in the changeless reality. The, the, it's not how to know experientially, it's that you know experientially. The middle wasn't intended for you to stay in desiring, into wanting, into waiting or doubting or suffering. That's not God's will. God's will is that you have the kingdom now and know that you are the kingdom, that it's all yours. That, it's ne- that when you desire something, it's already fulfilled. That's God's will. Right? The middle wasn't intended for you to stay there desiring and wanting it and try to make it happen. God's will is absolute fulfillment here and now and forever and ever. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and last. There was no intention to have you suffer in the middle. Do you see it? It's for you to be that version of you that you want to be. It, it, that the secret of the excluded middle is go to will to will. Your will, your desire or divine urge to know yourself as source or as the creator. That's your divine will. And God's will is that God's will is, is that perfect knowing and fulfillment that you already are it. Do you see it? That you are that knowing. So you go will to will. Your will, become, it, you, your will becomes God's will. Right? I am. I have come. This is what Jesus meant. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. For you to recognize that, that the middle is just an experience and it's how you experience that, how you have the physical experience of what you already know but you're already there. That's what it meant in Luke 22, 42. Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. What's the cup? The cup of suffering. The middle. That's the cup. Take the middle away from me. I'm getting getting caught in the messy middle, right? And, And remember, what is God's will? Perfect knowing, perfect fulfillment. So not my will, not my will where I desire it, but I feel separate from it. I desire it, but I don't see the fulfillment of it. I want my will to match your will, God. Right? So not my will, but yours be done. And remember, God's will is absolute fulfillment here and now. God wills for you what you will for you, because God doesn't meddle in the middle. So your will is the divine urge to know yourself as source. But if you're, if you're suffering, if you're creating the idea of suffering, if you're, if you're creating something else, then align your absolute will with God's, right? Your will matches God's will when you exclude the middle. It goes will to will. It goes from desire to fulfillment immediately. The middle is excluded, right? God doesn't know anything of the middle of doubt, fear, non-fulfillment, or suffering. Doesn't meddle there. One allows you to think and feel and experience whatever you desire, whatever you choose, but doesn't will that for you, wills for you perfect fulfillment because it knows that no matter what you experience, no matter what you think and feel and the conditions in that awareness that you are, it doesn't change who you are. God knows that. God knows the ending is guaranteed. It's a sure thing. You've got it all. That's powerful. So to desire it means it's fulfilled. 
right? The middle is the beginning and the end. Assume, imagine, affirm, see, perceive, and experience reality as evidence of your new life and desired reality no matter what. This is what he did. Made it about him, but doesn't mean he didn't imagine his specific person, but imagines that the world and everything else revolves around him, revolves around his fulfillment, right? Imagine your specific person, others in the world living their best life with you as the center and as life itself. Wow, this is powerful. Not from the outside looking in, but from the inside looking in. <laughs> We're looking, right? From the inside looking in. That's powerful. That's really how you create your ideal relationship, manifesting that specific person. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for joining our Facebook group. We had a ton of new um, uh, people that are joining our group on Facebook. This is the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors that you can find us at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful. I'm glad you're enjoying the group. And you can also find us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Karen, TikTok at Be Something Wonderful, and our membership channel. If you're a member, thank you for being with us. Thank you for being with us this morning on our third live stream. We're going to have more live streams on the membership channel, so stay tuned. And another video, more content coming on the membership channel. If you're not a member, just check it out. There's a link below. Creators with great love, with great light and infinite gratitude. This is Tom Karen here in the studio, so be something wonderful. Until next time, we'll see you soon.